Amateur awesome? Yeah. And we can do this pretty quick. Okay, let's pull down these images and uh, see what we're working with. That's a lot of assets. Way too many to do manually, so let's get this imported and I'll show you how to automate this thing. And we better hurry. Before we hit the ground running, let me show you what the settings are in terms of automating to the beat, because that will have an impact on how you set it up. For right now, we're just gonna select a couple of images so that we can go to clip, automate to sequence. If we don't select the images, it'll be grayed out. It won't be anything to do. First things first, we have our ordering here, our selection or sort. This selection is really based on the order in which you choose it. And then the sort here is really just grabbing the whole thing and it's going to sort just by alphabetical or however you have it in your folder. For placement, you've got two options. You have sequentially and at unnumbered markers. Right now, it defaults to sequentially, that's fine. That's not what we want for right now because we're gonna mark to the beat. And the only reason it's grayed out is just because we don't have any markers to go off of. The method here is either overwrite or insert. I'll show you the difference there because one is going to work perfectly, overwrite, and then the insert is, it's really gonna mess you up. And I'll show you that here in a second. We wanna use the in and out range, and we don't really care about any of the other stuff. Now, the next thing we wanna do is mark out our beat, which is the M on our keyboard, but pay close attention onto what is highlighted. If our audio track is highlighted and we hit the M key, you're gonna notice right here, we're going to have a marker on the actual track, which is exactly what we don't want. Instead, we want to make sure that when we hit the marker, it is actually on the timeline. So now the fun part is we get to mark out the beat. Now, if you miss a couple markers, you can go back and slide and adjust them as necessary or delete and re-add them as necessary, but you get the point. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of these guys. I think that's enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my playhead to the very, very beginning. And the reason for that is when the system starts laying down those assets, it's actually gonna start at the playhead, not the first marker. So if your playhead is way back where you finish the marking, it's gonna go from there on versus starting where you want it to. So make sure that playhead is at the very beginning. Now, when you come up here to clip, you'll notice that automate to sequence is not enabled. Why would that be? Very, very simple. It's because our highlight here is on our track and not up here where it needs to be in the project panel. If we come back to clip now, we can see automate to sequence. Go ahead and choose our selection. Make sure that's set. There's our at unnumbered markers. We wanna do the overwrite edit and click okay. One more quick tip and you'll notice here on my timeline, it actually put the first asset at the first marker, not where my playhead was. So if you wanna correct that, undo all these things, we're going to add another marker right at the beginning, come back up here to our project panel, make sure that's highlighted, go to clip, automate to sequence, make sure we're good to go here, and click okay. Now it's from the very beginning. Now I told you I would actually show you what overwrite versus edit is. For dramatic effect, I'm gonna come over here to this guy right here, and I'm going to say, let's start this whole sequence over, automate to sequence here, but instead of overwrite, I'm gonna do insert and watch what happens. Basically create a space or inserts it instead of overwriting it. That could ruin your day right there if you didn't know what you're doing. So be careful. I'm gonna undo that. We're gonna start from there and let's take a look at how it looks now. easy and apparently just in time too if you want to know more about the best export settings for Facebook for something like this go ahead and check out that next video